Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to Crown Stack VoiceOver. My name is Neil Glasgow. In today's Before You Buy, I'm going to be covering the VoiceOver website, ACX. Now, before we kick this off, what this review is not going to be is, is the platform any good? Should you get involved in that? I'm going to do that in another video, so stay tuned for that. That'll be released uh, this coming Friday. Um, but for this video, it's just going to be a Before You Buy on the platform itself. Now, if this is your first before you buy, what I do is I give you the ups and downs of a platform, what I think they do well, where I think they might be able to improve, and ultimately help you make a decision on whether you should spend your time on it. So, with that in mind, let's get into it. Now, if you're not familiar with ACX, essentially ACX is Amazon's Audible um, platform for narrators, production houses and authors all to kind of get together and collaborate and, and work together. So the way that it works is an author or a production house will put uh, a book up on ACX and you as the narrator are able to go and find the types of books that you want to work on audition for those books, potentially get selected, and then you will be the author for that book. That book is then sold on Amazon and on Audible, and from there you can build your library, get paid, all that sort of stuff that comes from being a, a published narrator on an audiobook. So my first stop for the platform is actually the, the range of work that is available on the platform. Now, there are hundreds of thousands of books on Audible. And what you're able to do is search through all the types of books that they work on and you, as the voiceover artist, get to select the types of books that you want to audition for. Now, do you want to do long-form narration, novels, e-learning? Do you want to do marketing books, history books? Whatever really suits your style, there are auditions available for you to get involved in. I think that's quite a good thing and it gives you a bit of control on what it is that you look for rather than just auditioning for what becomes available like some other platforms do. So that's an up. My next up for the platform is they allow you to choose how you as the voiceover artist want to be paid. Now you could be paid through a per finished hour. So if you're not sure what that is, that essentially means if you charge $100 per finished hour and the audiobook is five hours, you're charging $500. Now, that is not per finished hour that you work. That five hours might actually take you six hours, seven hours to record, edit, etc. So be conscious of that, but they allow you to do that or, or rather, and, because they can let you do both, depends on what you want to do, you can get a royalty share. And the royalty share essentially says when the book sells, you will get a proportion of what the book's value is. Um, and over X amount of time, I think every 30 days, they do a, a roundup, how many books sold, and then you get a payment from that. I'm going to come back to this particular point a little bit later on, but that it gives you and the publishing house and the author a bit of flexibility in how you want to work and how you want to get paid. Yeah, I like that. That's an up. My next up for the platform is actually their um, profile page. So what they do is they get you to create a profile, so pictures, background experience, that sort of stuff. They let you upload really as many samples as you need. Now, these could be previous audiobooks that you've worked on, um, basic studio demos, whatever it is that you think highlights your, your voice and your capability, put that on there because the platform does allow authors and um, production houses to search for you um, and, and all your characteristics. So it's not just about you reaching out, people can, can reach out to you. Um, then, again, you select how you want to be paid, then crack into the auditions. And the auditions are really where this platform comes to life. And then after you've done your audition, that goes off to whoever is judging that, and that'll be, again, the author or the, the production house, and they'll come back to you with an offer. And the offer is essentially a contract. If you want to get involved in this, um, then this is how we're willing to pay. And, and they might have pre-outlined um, how they want to pay or how they want to be involved beforehand. Um, this is the contract. This is what we're, we're offering you to be the official narrator for this audiobook, audiobook series, 
whatever it is that you're you're going through again i quite like that because it's giving you the control over what it is that you want to be involved in and you might be thinking to yourself well what the hell does amazon get out of this amazon has uh, a bit that they take off the top of any sale regardless that's just if you want to be involved these are the terms take it or leave it um but that they're also not overly involved at this point yeah i quite like that that's enough my next up is they actually have a built-in checkpoint so you've done all the things you've auditioned you've been hired now what they want is a 15 minute sample of of your book to test a that it's read in the right way that the client is looking for but also that the audio quality that you're producing is in line with what uh, acx looks for now there's a couple of uh, painful things that come with that you know you you'll maybe produce and normalize the way that you normally would and acx have been known to come back and say no there's a whole bunch of errors here and what i've tended to find with the stuff that i've worked on is it's a volume level you know i i i need to normalize to plus six db sometimes which is way too loud but something happens between my end and and acx's end that that makes that work um but in doing that again it's you're not going to read 10 hours only to find that it's not what they're looking for and it's not right having that little checkpoint there i think it's a good uh, habit to be in for a lot of publishers so yeah that's an up as well my next up on the platform is actually their resource section and i've, I've talked about this a, a lot in other videos as well but this is amazon's version so what they uh, say to again get notice get the books going make more money is they give you social media tips hints how to's for everything from twitter youtube linkedin facebook how to be better on social media how to post when to post it's free resource and again if you follow some of their tips they say that will help again that they're giving you as a voiceover artist hints and tips on how to be more successful not just on their platform but just in general and we all know in today's gig economy you need to be out there as much as you can just building that reputation yeah i like that that's an up my next up is they actually give you some video resources for producing for their platform and again that's just a little bit helpful for me i i like to learn things by watching videos hi welcome to my channel um it just helps me and i think it helps more people out there to be able to just see ah okay if i follow these steps this will help me be a little bit more successful on the platform particularly when it comes to the production elements and is this of the right quality to be able to essentially be published are people going to buy your audiobook with you as the narrator so yeah i quite like that that's an up and my last up on the platform is their search functionality for when you as the voiceover are looking for auditions now you can look through uh, a whole load of filters but essentially you if i was looking for one i would say male um i'm looking for uh, royalty share and paid and unspecified because some people haven't put that in i could put in my specific accent which is great they they've got a really good library on uh accents all over the world that are region specific and then books can come up on what i can audition for and one of the really good features and one of the ones that i encourage you to look at if you're looking at any of these books once you select a book that you want to audition for you can actually link through to where that book is on amazon now if you see that book on amazon and it's it's got one review and it's 14 millionth in the charts i'd maybe have a little think and see is this something that i want to work on but what i like about that is actually they are saying this is where it's at and you can audition for it if you wish to and you could be successful or not but it's giving you a little bit more control and a little bit more insight to be able to say yeah do you know what i'm not going to read a 25 hour epic on a royalty share platform if this book's been out for three years and has sold two copies with one review they're giving you that information they don't have to it's not in their interest to but you know it's it's there it's information available i'm always in favor of that that's an up so my first down for the platform is actually harking back to the royalty share element so what acx essentially do is for every book sold they take 50 percent you and the narrator then split 
the remaining amount, with the narrator getting the lion's share of that. Let's call it a 60-40 share. Weird numbers there. But what that does is it reduces the amount that everyone can earn, unless the book's radically successful, it's how much you can earn. And when they pay, they don't pay every time a book sells, they accumulate, as I say, over a period. Now, the problem with that and the down element comes in is you as the narrator don't get a lot of insight into when that book sells, how much potential you're getting. There's a dashboard, there's a, there's a payment thing. They try to give you a little bit of analytics around it. But there's more that could be done and the customer service element when you've got a question about something is not overly responsive. So the overall down comes down to when you are looking to get paid and when you're looking for the long-term benefits of your work, on a, and I'm talking specifically about the royalty share, because if you do the uh, paid per finished hour, the publisher or the author will pay you directly, so you don't need to worry about that. This is specifically for the royalty share. There is more that that platform could do to give you a little bit better insight and forecast into what you could potentially be earning. Yeah, that's a down. My next down is their technical customer service audio engineers, however you want to look at it. Say you've uh, been recording for many, many years, as some of us have, and you upload a sample of, of the audiobook that you're working on, and you'll get a message back going, this isn't up to our standards, this doesn't work, this doesn't work. It doesn't give you, it tells you all the things they think is wrong, but no solution on how to fix them. And bear in mind, if you're a veteran of the industry, a lot of the things that they're saying don't really make sense, which is why I, I mentioned earlier that in my experience, it's always about a volume thing. And I've you know had to really elevate the volume elements to get it past their blockages. But without knowing what their blockages are, why they come up, and they're not, as I say, overly communicative, it leaves the ownership and the onus on you to figure that out. And the problem with this is, and the, and the wider issue with this is, I've worked with a, a couple of producers who I'll get an email to say that there's an issue with the overall book, but they won't, or vice versa. And when you're working in that collaborative environment, yeah, that's not good. They're not doing enough on their end, taking a lot of money, mm, uh, but they're not doing enough on their end that makes it feel like a fair and supported way to work. So yeah, that's a down. And my last down for ACX is their vetting system, whatever that may be. There are reports and you know you can find this all yourself. Lots and lots and lots, lots of scammers on there. Essentially, these are people that, hey, I'm, I've written this book. I'd like you to audition and, and, and read for it. You read that, you get the contract, you might do the entire book, you might do several hours of the book, and then the, the project gets cancelled. And it gets cancelled by ACX themselves because they've then done some more due diligence and found out that this book's been plagiarised, it's been stolen, it's been replicated, whatever it is. The, the author is not the person who owns this book. And the problem for you as the narrator at that point is you've done the work and you get nothing from it. ACX don't indemnify your time at all, despite the fact that you've done nothing wrong. And from purely a narrator voiceover perspective, that's a hell of a gamble for you to take sometimes, not knowing. Now, this is by far a small percentage of the books that are on ACX, but that you have no idea which books are the ones that are the scams yeah, the gamble is absolutely there, and I don't like any site, despite the fact that this is free to join and, and, and use, it's your time. I don't like that. I don't like feeling that I'm gambling with my time on the hope and a, and a dream that it will be finished and produced and go the distance. Yeah, I think there could be significantly more, given that this is Jeff Bezos, Amazon, Audible, blah, 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 there's money that could be spent here to be better. It's a down. And I would say if you're looking at ACX as a viable option for getting into audiobooks, 
there really are some great titles on there that you really can be successful with. Just do your due diligence as much as you possibly can. If you found this video helpful, drop me a like and subscribe. It genuinely does help the channel out. And remember, you can absolutely be a voiceover artist. I'll see you in the next video.